Welcome to Good Libations, which is our show about mixology, the art of making truly fine cocktails with fresh ingredients. And we're going to do something entirely different today that we've never done before. We're going to feature the country of Brazil, and you might say their national distilled spirit, cachaça. And cachaça was rarely used in this country. It was known, but rarely used. But in recent times, it's becoming more popular in upscale watering holes. So we're going to make some drinks based on cachaça today. And cachaça is distilled actually from sugarcane juice. Now you might think, oh, that sounds an awful lot like rum. But in reality, it is not like rum at all. The flavor is not like rum. And rum, in fact, is actually distilled from molasses, which is a byproduct of sugar cane and also tailings and things of that nature. But not cachaça, that is actually from sugar cane juice. So you will notice when you taste it, even neat, it has more herbaceousness, more earthiness, I would say, and more fruitiness. So it's an entirely different beverage from rum. And it does come in different, uh, you might say, potencies. Just like we have golden rum and dark rum with cachaça, it's the same thing. There's a light cachaça, which I happen to have today, and there's darker ones too. There's golden ones and also ones that are fairly dark, and they have a different flavor quality to them and a different complexity. And you might wonder, how in the world did sugarcane ever get to Brazil? Was it there to begin with? No, it was not indigenous to Brazil. In fact, the Portuguese brought it from the island of Madeira. And apparently a lot of Brazilians descended not just from mainland Portuguese, but also from the peoples of Madeira. So that is how the sugarcane ended up there. And thus the product cachaça was created. Now, the first cocktail that we're going to make with cachaça is one of the most popular, the Capriana. It's probably the most well-known cocktail that's made with cachaça. And I probably mispronounced it, but I'm not a, a student of Brazilian Portuguese. But anyway, how I like to make it is I like to make it in a shaker. So that's what we're going to do. And oddly, this is a beverage where you have to muddle slices of lime first in sugar and cachaça. And then we'll be divesting it into uh, actual glassware. So anyway, we're gonna set about doing that very thing here. I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting up slices of lime here. And this is a pretty potent drink. It's not for sissies, but it's a good one. Definitely a good one. And I'm going to try not to overdo here because we're doing tasting quantities, not the quantities that we would necessarily serve in a bar. But anyway, I'm going to cut it a bit more before I put it in the shaker. And this is a fairly juicy lime, thank goodness, because sometimes they are as dry as can be and really inferior, and that ruins basically the effect of everything. And the name Cachaça does have the sedia on the last C, which gives it an S sound, something like Francois and Facade. And in the Portuguese language, there's a heavy use of the sedia, both Brazilian and mainline Portuguese. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and throw these um, lime fragments in here. And I'm going to put the sugar and the um, cachaça in here. And some people like to cut this drink, so to speak, with uh, a little bit of water, but I'm not going to do that. We're going to have a real drink here. And again, it's going to be a sampling quantity, not the sort of quantity that we would necessarily serve in a bar. And I'm going to add the sugar to the shaker here. And to save from spilling it everywhere, I'm going to access it down here. Trying to get this thing to open and to cooperate. 
And we've had endless discussions about me bending over for ice and sugar, and frankly, it's realistic. That's the thing, because in a bar, you're going to be doing lots of bending over. And the same thing if you're doing private mixology in someone's, you might say, garden or whatever. You're going to be bending over a lot. So it's not pretty, but it's realistic, and we want realism. And also, the art of improvisation is uh, very important. Because very often we don't have all the implements that we need, like I don't have a muddler. So I'm going to use a metal spoon to muddle the lime fragments in the sugar in the cachaça. And again, if you were to taste the cachaça meat, you know, without anything in it, you'd get a very different flavor from rum. Can't, as I mentioned, compare it with anything in particular. It's very, very, very different. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, going to put some ice in the glass and then I'm going to divest the liquid. And you can also do it, just for the sake of demonstrating to you, you can also divest the ice in the shaker and shake it over ice, which I might just do just for the sake of variety. But you could actually do it either style that you wish. But we'll do it in the shaker all the way, rather than just using it as a medium for meddling. So we'll go ahead and divest this in glassware. And a glass that exhibits the drink nicely, um, something like this glass, is suitable. You can also use an old-fashioned glass, half old-fashioned glass. That also is very workable for this particular cocktail. And we do want the ice in the glass, in this drink, so we're going to go ahead and get it and the lime slices in here as much as we can without making a big mess because that is what you're supposed to do with this particular cocktail. And of course now is the important part. We're gonna taste it and see if it really lives up to all the hype. And this again is the most popular drink that is made with cachaça. So we're gonna see how it tastes here. Oh yes, that is very nice. Because the, the fruitiness of the lime goes well with the fruitiness and herbaceousness of the cachaça. It adds an extra dimension to it. And lime is absolutely perfect. Orange is perfect too, lemon less so. Lemon is usually good if you're using bourbon or, or scotch or some types of rum, but with cachaça, the lime in this is absolutely wonderful. It just does the job. Ah, oh, that's good. So you can imagine what it must have been like in the early days of when Brazil was settled, when the settlers came from the mainland and from Madeira and brought the sugar cane. And of course, every culture has alcoholic beverages that are distilled from something. We have whiskey from corn and rye. The Scots have theirs. And uh, rum from molasses element of sugarcane and cachaça from sugarcane juice that's been fermented. And again, this is a, a cocktail to enjoy that's something different and something extraordinary, something out of the realm of most Americans' uh, experience with alcoholic beverages. And I encourage people to give these a try. And we're going to actually do a couple of other drinks based on cachaça. There's an endless variety of them, just as there is cocktails with any base liquor. And you might be surprised at the variety of things that you can make from cachaça. So anyway, as I always mention in my programs, we want to be careful when we consume alcoholic beverages to make sure that we do so in moderation and with care because we want to keep our community safe and well-spoken of. 
we don't want to go to excesses or have a situation where maybe we partied a bit too much but we don't have a designated driver. Not a good idea. And of course now we have services like Uber and uh, Lyft where you can be taken from place to place even without having to worry about that particular factor. So, again, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Good Libations. I'm Ethel Andrews. I'm a mixologist, and we will be having further episodes based on Kishasa. Thank you again. Goodbye.